Welcome back everybody to the YouTube channel. Today we got a little 1800 square footer, I don't know, 80s house. But first off, I want to apologize because I know I haven't been creating the vlog content in a minute. Just been really busy. We've been growing the business, um, promoted a lead inspector, and then also revamped our training program so we can get more one-on-one -on -one focus uh, with our trainees. So that's taken a little bit of time. And then also I've been going on vacation. You know, the whole COVID thing is a, a little less scary now. And uh, we've been vacationing a little bit. So I will get back to the vlog. I have one more trip in front of this one and then EC's and I will get back in the field. So we're gonna get more of this type of shot today because EC's is not with me today. One, it's raining and uh, two, it's Friday normally we shoot on Thursday so she can edit the video on Friday but it is what it is oh also the podcast will be coming back to as well soon it'll be Josh and I will be getting it together so we're gonna get this new inspector mark in the field which this is his last week he gets released on Wednesday which is pretty exciting and uh, Josh and I should be getting the podcast back rolling again so with that being said, let's go see what we're going to find and let's go check it out. We can walk this roof. What? So we can walk this roof. That's what I'm saying. It's slow, <laughs> it's slow sloping up. We should be able to do it, but yeah. if you start slipping up there, we have a, a weather note. Okay. Yeah. 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 If you do start slipping, definitely. Are you recording right now? A little bit. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> I'll record you falling off the roof after I told you not to be yeah. a bitch. <laughs> you brought yeah. like an inflatable Yeah, you're like, he told me to do it. Yeah. <laughs> all right. It's all right, Work workman's calm. Yeah, no. <laughs> not today. The very be mad at you. Yeah, uh, that will go in my HR file. Yeah. Okay, first thing. Yes, you can see it is raining and you can see the roof is actually a little damp. For this roof covering, what we always do whenever we're inspecting a roof in the rain is yes, we still try to walk it, but as soon as you put your feet on it and if you start slipping or anything like that, say the shingles are too dirty, then you just don't even make the effort. Uh, you can still get a really good feeling from the ground with this type of pitch. And then also you can see underneath while it's raining, you can catch any type of uh, water leaks coming into the attic area and then also we use our infrared cameras too as well I'm gonna try to keep this lens clean so setting up the, the ladder where I set it up is very intentional uh, I set it up right in the valley so whenever I walk up the ladder I'll step off to the right right into the valley so your feet uh, you know it's it's more sturdy it's a safer path to travel and then also most of the time i noticed on a roof pitch like this whenever i'm walking on it i mean even in the rain with these composite shingles your feet just stick so uh you're we'll, we'll be okay today i know we'll be okay but just letting you know my thought process about where i set my ladder up and how i get on a roof with it raining so let's let's walk up this ladder so I've used several ladders. This is actually a little giant ladder. Um, my, you can actually get this from our tool list on the HIW or homeiw.com. You can find this and a uh, uh, little giant, literally the best ladder. Art. I have a little, a little giant ladder that is uh, eight years old and it's still in the field. Josh still uses it. So ooh, look at this. So the gutters full, easy ride up. And this causes a lot of run back into the soffit area. So we want to make sure and check the soffits for rot and whatnot. First thing I notice is the, uh, the composite shingle. It looks really nice. It's obviously newer. You can see someone's gone through the neighborhood. The same guy that did this probably did that one over there. And then also a good sign of a good roofer is they replaced all the flashing whenever they place the roof. A lot of the time they try to save a little bit of money by not replacing the boots and stuff. So, you know, look at that. They sealed the fasteners too, which is pretty amazing. Just looking around this uh, roof covering material, looks pretty good. 
The only thing that looks a little questionable right now is obviously the uh, chimney flashing over here. The step flashing looks a little iffy. Not sure what they got going on here. You can already see some holes in the, the corner. It's really hard to flash these chimneys properly because of their design. I, I mean, they leak all the time. Yeah, check this out right here. Yeah, that's that's probably leaking. Yeah, definitely. But we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. You never know. Uh, but this is a perfect day to determine if it's leaking or not. Uh, coming up, the cap, you got a little bit of cracks in it. But this is pretty common due to the age. Done some minor repairs. Chimney cap looks good. And uh, we'll just get an infrared camera in there. And whenever we're walking the attic space, we'll walk over here. You can always do little test to see if there's some rot, huh? Seems to be holding up okay, so we'll take a look on the inside. Uh, this boot looks a little out of place, and right here too, you have a boot going right into a box vent. Uh, easy area for water penetration. I'm not gonna say it's wrong right 100% yet. As a home inspector, we're more performance. Is it working? And that's one of our biggest concerns. So perfect day to determine if it's been working. It's been raining for 36 hours or 24 hours out here in Houston. So we're gonna be able to see if this is leaking in the attic space too as well. So good day to be inspecting in the rain. We're gonna be able to see if this plumbing stack area, flashing area is leaking. Also around the chimney, which it is definitely leaking over there. And we get to see if Mark catches it. All right, let's uh, move around the exterior. Okay, uh, move into the exterior of the property. You know, um, let me explain why I'm not on the interior. If you watch our routine video, uh, which is one of our most watched videos of our inspection routine, normally, you know, I start on the inside, but with Josh and Mark here, you also, there's actually like tenants inside too, so I think most, I'm gonna have to stay outside for the most part. I don't wanna get too crowded in there and invade their space, because normally there's only one of us, um, or two, but three is just kind of excessive, so outside video today. But anyways, start on the exterior of the property. Uh, what I always like to do whenever I do the exterior of the property is I like to start at the gate. So starting at the gate, what, what this makes you do is see the outside of the property twice. So what happens is I start at the gate, I'll, I'll do a close pass around the front of the property, and then you do a wide pass. And this makes forces you to see the property in two different lights, and I guarantee you're going to find a whole new set of problems walking far away than you are close. So, um, so, let's, so let's start what I normally like to do. When you reach a corner, you look down the brick line of the property, and this brick line looks looks really good. You know, it's nice and straight, and uh, there's no signs of movement on this side. Also, this is older too, right? So where the soffit comes together uh, next to the siding, you can see there's no gap right here too as well. So uh, this is, a, a good indication that there has been no significant movement on uh, the property. Another easy spot right here, obviously you want to put this in your inspection report in the grading and drainage section. This just shows uh, that you have poor and marginal drainage to the property. Man, it's starting to really rain. Uh, poor and marginal drainage. <laughs> you can see they added some sort of little surface drain here, but it's not performing. So. We definitely want to write this up because this is actually one of the main causes of foundation issues in the Houston area is water. So um, we want to make sure that they repair this. And what I mean by make sure they repair it, obviously we can't force anyone uh, to repair anything. So um, what, what I'm saying is, is we document it and let the new future homeowners know, and it's really raining. I'm gonna have to take a break. Uh, but we let the, the new homeowners know that this is something they're gonna wanna tackle immediately because right now it hasn't caused any issues, but over a long period of time, it will cause the structure to move and invite you know, a lot of things like termites from excessive moisture, mosquitoes, and foundation movement. 
So like I was talking to you before in the past about uh, how the gutters, when they're full like that and not draining properly, they cause rollout and rot in the soffit area. So you can see we have a lot of rot on the, the fascia here and uh, you have some rot in the uh, soffit area. So easy call outs, but also those are pretty easy repairs. You don't want to stress a new homeowner or buyer out about these issues, but you do want to inform them about those about the situation so during the close pass you can see that obviously because of the gutters we have more rot in the soffit area here and it's dripping and it's caused a lot of poor drainage because of all the water impacting this area so the water's not draining away from the structure properly inviting all the things I've explained in the past so I uh, just recommend to repair this area and then also all this excessive moisture you start to see dirt build up and stuff so you want to focus in these areas for termites and uh, I bet we find something over there maybe we'll see see over here we have a little bit of foliage and we have this this wood uh, grate right here and right here I can't dig right yet quite yet but we'll get to it in a minute uh, because I want to I want Mark to try to catch this uh, this would be possible termites you can kind of see how they're building up in this area maybe ants too but it's hard to tell because it's raining and then you can also see the weep hole starting to fill with uh, some of the, the tubes so we're gonna open this up in a little bit or try to get Mark to see if he can catch this because if he can catch this that means he's starting to get get the eye of uh, an inspector and situational of things so uh, good spot you want to keep an eye out for this this is a good spot to find termites Another good spot to find termites is in this section. You know, you got a lot of heavy foliage, the bush, the little bit of rotted wood at the bottom of the garage trim. And normally there's a gap in where the slab is built here. So they like to crawl up in these areas. So you just try to look really closely in this area so they got big dogs. Big dogs, but you're not really seeing any shelter tubes in this area. Right, hopefully we can take a look in the garage to get those dogs out of there. Same situation on the other side of the property. It's uh, looking pretty good. Uh, you can see the brick line's really straight. All the old siding hasn't really shifted or anything. You can see that the original lines here um, between the, the fascia, I'm um, at the soffit and the brick siding, there's no real significant shifting. We just have the same thing, you know, the rot, uh, probably from the free previous roof in this location. So. Uh, um, yeah, uh, looks pretty good over here, especially uh, due to the age. Stuff to write up always, but nothing to stress uh, the new homeowner about. Okay, heading into the interior of the structure. Uh, doing a voiceover here because of the tenants, couldn't talk too much. But what we are doing here is shining the flashlight across the roof, the ceiling, to see if we had any water penetration. But you can obviously see it in the back side of the structure. But... On the interior, we used an infrared camera. You can see that little blue dot showing that we do have elevated temperature readings or cool temperature readings. Use the moisture meter, but we couldn't use the surface of it. It wasn't really showing up. And the only other way to get it to work is to stab it with the other portion of the proteometer, but we didn't want to do that because you're going to cause damage to the property and the tenants are right there. On the interior of the property, we have the water heater. Obviously, it's nearing the end of its life. You have the rust and corrosion around the fittings. But the reason why I'm saying the end of its life, it looks like the age is in the late 90s, it looks like, maybe. And uh, um, so, you know, that's 20 plus years old. We have a lot of iffy electrical work on the inside. Whenever you start to see like this, you gotta think about what's going on in the attic underneath the insulation. What Mark is doing there, he's traveling his back as far as he can safely. He's looking where he's moving and he's trying to check the water, if the water's caused any major damage behind the fireplace. Okay, running out of camera battery, so we're gonna wrap the video up there. Um, so we found some really good stuff, obvious roof leaks around the chimney that was questionable. So. Whenever you're first looking at something, like I've always mentioned in the past, don't develop a full opinion as soon as you see it. Get the full evaluation, you know. 
look at it be like hey it looks a little iffy it might be working it might not and then really try to figure out if it's working or not the camera died i was on a roll in the garage and the camera decided to die so overall this is an investment property obviously so positive things foundation's fine roof is good ish they still need a repair but overall it is good then you have the hvac system brand new hvac system pretty good shape but as you could see when mark was walking through they have the older age ductwork the gray ductwork so we're definitely going to let the client know about that negatives side of the property they have some weird electrical work going on around the property is this a good investment property in my opinion probably yes it always depends on the price of what you can afford you know and how much money it costs to fix it to bring it up to par uh, whenever it comes in to you know fully working order uh, this is actually probably one of the nicer investment properties around this uh, price range whenever you have all this upgraded mechanical and structural stuff you know cosmetic stuffs whatever but I'd say the biggest items obviously are the electrical work because electrical can cause fires and safety issues especially when you have tenants inside so that's something that I'd probably address right away if I was purchasing this property um, that being said um, uh, overall not too bad pretty good and uh, we'll get back to the hustle and try to get that podcast up and running so if you like these types of videos please hit the like and subscribe button catch us on the next one and sorry for the camera battery dying and the weird camera angles I couldn't get it perfect this time not always perfect but at least it's something right all right catch us on the next one see ya bye